the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Knox service for this morning. Our Knox community is still worshipping online. If we are able to resume our services in the sanctuary, it will not be until Thanksgiving at the earliest, and even that isn't definite. But we are adaptable, we can make the best of a difficult situation, so we persevere with the YouTube services, even though this isn't ideal. Our July services received over 130 views each in some cases. The August ones, there were fewer views, but with the approach of fall, we hope that these numbers edge up over the 100 mark again, as we really need to keep our Knox network, our connections and our community intact. This business of making the best of a difficult situation made me think of a similar situation in England in the 17th century. This was at a time when a branch of the Christian church known as the Quakers were experiencing a disruption to their routine. This was because many of the adults were, had been incarcerated because Quaker worship was not seen as appropriate. They did not have rituals, they did not have paid or accountable definite clergy and imagine they treated men and women as equals. So, with the Quaker adults in jail, it fell to the children to keep the meeting, as they put it, and the children rose to the occasion and did, in fact, keep meetings held, keep the meetings going during this difficult time. And I really salute these children because Quaker worship traditionally is an hour of silent worship punctuated by people standing up to, when they feel moved to speak, to say their piece and then sit down again. So I salute those children just in the same way that I salute Emily and Bruce and Brenda and Meg for being able to assemble our services on iMovie and then upload them to YouTube. So thank you all for that. So at Knox, we need to maintain our religious practices just as those Quaker children did in England over 300 years ago. They followed the words of Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord. Today, we are going to be looking at how the Ephesians were advised to be strong in the Lord, the more deta the details of this passage, and how we can adapt these words to our own circumstances. With that in mind, please hold silence, just as the Quakers did then and still do, while the Christ candle is lit.
God of wisdom and good judgment. Your guidance tells us that the time is not yet here for gathering in our beloved Knox Sanctuary, but your influence exhorts us to do the best we can under difficult circumstances, and so we persevere with online worship. Today, we approach you to ask for the gift of your strength so that we may cope with the uncertainties, difficulties, and disappointments of these days. We consider the power of the evil and marvel at its robustness and pray that we too will soar above our adversities. Today, as we ponder ancient words of scripture, we are called upon to develop our creative gifts. Help us as we reshape biblical writings into images that are meaningful for our time and place. In so doing, may scripture come alive for us today. Amen.
Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, from the New Revised Standard Version. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a house, and the swallow a nest where she may labor young. At your altars, God of hosts, my sovereign, my God. Today's reading from Ephesians describes the typical appearance of a battle-ready Roman soldier. And this would have been a meaningful metaphor for the people receiving this letter 
which would have been written sometime during the first two centuries of the Common Era, what we used to call AD. Although it's entitled Paul's Letter to the Ephesians, modern scholars say that it is very unlikely that Paul actually wrote this letter. But not to worry about that because the important fact is that it provided much needed encouragement for the people of Ephesus, the ruins of which are found in modern day Turkey. And these words of support were needed particularly acutely because at that time Christians were persecuted to quite a severe degree. They had scorn, abuse and physical attacks um, on them and life was most unpleasant until the Roman Emperor Constantine made Christianity okay in the year 313. But can any of us relate to breastplates and shields and swords? I'm not sure we can, I know I can't. So we do need some symbols that we can relate to on a more personal level that are appropriate for this day and age. So here goes. In order to gird yourself with a belt of truth, you need to consult with a variety of sources, hopefully avoiding the dread fake news. Truth is often hard to obtain because all news sources are biased to some degree. So maybe it's wise to work your way through a variety of sources. In addition to the CBC and CTV, I've used RT or Russia Television and the BBC or broadcast, British Broadcasting Corporation as news sources. For a physical item to represent the belt of truth, I've, cho I've chosen one of my favourite magazines, The New Internationalist, which is, written, which is published by a cooperative and the contents include articles on global justice that are written by a variety of authors from a wide range of perspectives from all over the world. So this comes highly recommended as a belt of truth. Then we have the breastplate of righteousness. And I don't think breastplates are relevant to most of us unless you're in an occupation that requires a bulletproof vest. So I'm going to suggest instead T-shirts. Could be a modern day equivalent. And here are my favourite ones. They're from the, sunny, from, the, from the Sunny Cove camp, which I go to every year, except this year, which has obviously been cancelled due to COVID. But they have some inclusive and um, very welcome uh, sentiments on them. You, you've got a friend in me, or Team Awesome, or hashtag not alone. This reminds me of the pink t-shirt campaign that was started in Canada in, 20, in 2007 by two, stu two grade 10 students. One of their cohort was being bullied because he chose to wear a pink t-shirt. And these boys said, we're going to put a stop to this. Uh, if we all wear a pink t-shirt, that uh, defuses the situation and offers support. And I think that was an idea that worked very well, and so now we have Pink T-Shirt Day, which was a real step forward, I believe. So I'm using T-shirts as my breastplate of righteousness. Next, as shoes for your feet, as shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. We read in verse 15. And we were given grim reminders of this fundamental need for peace earlier this month when we observed the 75th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So I've chosen some peace cranes for, for, to, for my um, shoes. Then I figured this is a more meaningful symbol for me for this. And you will find peace cranes very much in evidence at the peace gardens and the museums at both Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I'm also including something, a little something my daughter gave me, and it is the kanji for peace, and in Japanese it would be spoken as heiwa. 
I'm not sure what it is in Chinese, but it would look the same. One way in which I've seen the gospel of peace promoted in this area is by having student exchanges. And one thing I wonder about is if such ventures had been commonplace before World War II, would there, could there have been a negotiated end to World War II and there would have been no bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki? We can't turn the clock back, but we can use that thought as we look to the future. For the shield of faith, I've chosen an item which saves us in the physical sense, a mask that was made for us by the hearts of Knox. And I'm choosing this one because it's better looking than the ones I've made myself. Now, there's more, there is more to this item than just health. I don't wear this in public indoor places just because the health unit tells me I must. I wear it out of respect for my fellow citizens. This is the 2020 version of the Golden Rule in action. I was really cheered when I went to the grocery store on Monday and everyone was wearing a mask and no one was complaining. So at the moment, Kenora is getting full marks for golden rule observation, I'd say, in that area. Next, we have the helmet of salvation. And the word salvation comes from the same root as salve, or, uh, uh, which we understand to be an ointment or an item which soothes, mollifies, or relieves. Just as tea cannot be poured from an empty pot, we cannot do that which we have been called to do. We can't go out in Jesus' name or take up his song of faith or peace unless we have also taken care of our own physical, emotional and spiritual needs. That's addressed our own self. And I'm, I'm talking about needs here and not wants. I'm using my original teddy bear as my salve to remind me of self-care. And then self-care can become a springboard to assisting others to meet their needs. The five items described in the biblical passage are either items used to defend rather than attack, such as the breastplate, the shield and the helmet, or items not related to warfare, such as the, the belt and the shoes. And the last mentioned item in this passage is the sword. And I have to thank English playwright and author Edward Bulwer Lytton for coming out with the observation that the pen is mightier than the sword. Even though this, these days a pen really is just a symbol because most of us use a computer if we're sending an, e if we're sending an email to our member of parliament or a letter to the editor or another way or another avenue to fight a battle. And even when we do send a snail mail letter, it's often computer generated. So the idea of the pen being mightier than the sword may be rephrased as thinking and writing have more influence on people and events than the use of force or violence. And as a worshipping community, we've uh, observed this by participating in the Right for Rights event every December. But don't think that this is an, uh, an event that should be just held in December it's wise to look for opportunities to wield the pen at other times of the year as well. I was really uh, elated when I heard the other day that environmental rollbacks that the provincial government had suggested were not going, that those rollbacks to our environmental protections were not going to be done. They were going to maintain the environmental protections and I was very cheered to hear that last year, I, I along with 4,000 other people, had answered a questionnaire or a survey, and I can't 
vouch for what other people said, but I was most definite in my request that the environmental protection stay in place. And I did bother to um, fill this document in and send it in, and it was obviously taken note of. So it is worth um, wielding the pen or the computer keys to make your point, to fight your battles. And you have to remember, though, that you're not going to win every battle, but it is really cheering when you do win the odd one. Now, with the whole armour of God assembled as an outward sign of inner resolve, what exactly are we defending ourselves against? What is meant in verse 11, which tells us to put on the whole armour of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And I'm going to quote once again from one of my favourite authors, Rabbi Harold Kushner. In his book, To Life, he recounted an incident where he'd, he had arranged to, meet, to speak to a group of Methodist women. This was in the US. And the, the event was quite widely publicised, so at the Saturday services the, the week before, one of his congregants came up to Rabbi Kushner afterwards and said, I hear you're speaking for the competition on Tuesday night. And both men laughed because they knew that the congregant was saying this just in jest. If Kushner had been in a more serious mode, he probably would have um, said something like, um, Christianity most certainly isn't the competition. Apathy, selfishness, and the idea that humans see every urge and desire as legitimate, they are the competition, or what we might see as the devil, he insisted. I don't know if that's how you, persuade, how you perceive what we're supposed to be fighting against, but I would think that's good as a draft copy. I needed to raise that question, but I don't want to finish on a negative note. So in conclusion, I'll just say that, what is it that encourages you in truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation? What would you have brought to this table? Points to ponder over the coming week. Amen.
God of these anxious times, remind us to look for strength in you. Encourage us to spread our wings and soar like eagles. Teach us how to fortify ourselves with your holy armour. Help us to see the truth in all matters of our daily lives, reminding us that science is not only compatible with spirituality, it is a profound source of spirituality. Guide us to make righteous decisions in all we do. Urge us to improve our standards regarding race relations, as we have seen that this is a critical need at this time. Exhort us to work diligently to find peaceful solutions to our difficult situations. Encourage us to have faith in you, O Lord, so that we may, may make right decisions, even though we may fear the results. Help us to know the benefits of salvation. As stated in Holy Scripture, may we remember to pray in the Spirit at all times. Regarding the specific concerns of this day, we pray for the people of Mali in West Africa as they face an uncertain future due to a recent coup. Much as we are inclined to complain about our government, we give thanks for checks and balances here in Canada, which give a certain measure of political stability. We pray for people in BC who have been forced to flee due to forest fires. May wise and caring forces be employed to meet their physical, emotional and spiritual needs at this time. We pray for all those who are planning to return to school very shortly. May wise decision making, careful planning and cooperative action be in abundance. We pray for Brenda Shodin as she recovers from a fall resulting in a broken ankle. Finally, we pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
peace, maintain your faith, know that you are saved, and pray in the Spirit at all times. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.